Hi everyone, it's Lindsay. Welcome back to another video. Today, I wanna share with you how to use polymer clay sprinkles. So in my last video, I shared how to use polymer clay and a clay extruder to create these little polymer clay sprinkles. You can buy these, but I showed you how to make your own because when I like to use them, I like to use a lot. So today, I wanna share with you how I like to use these sprinkles that I made. Now, before I get into the video, I do want to tell you that I did upload a new sticker sheet over on Etsy. It is the Branches sticker sheet. You might have seen the short journaling video I posted here on YouTube that coordinates with that new sticker sheet. It also comes with all the images in PNG format, so you can use them as digital stamps as well. Now, in this video, I will also be using some SVG cut files that are available in my Etsy shop as well. You can see those here. But let's get started with the video. The first way I like to use my polymer clay sprinkles are making shaker cards. So whenever I make a shaker card, it's the first thing to go out of my stash. My kids like to give them to their friends and they're just really fun. To make a shaker card, you need some sort of opening that you can fill with some sort of shaker element. In this case, I'm using polymer clay sprinkles and I'm using my thanks frame that I cut out with my Cricut machine. You also need a window. Now this can be made with acetate or you can make it with vellum like I'm doing here. I'm also going to need some dimensional foam and I need something behind that foam and behind my elements to hold everything in place so it doesn't spill out. And in my case, I like to use vellum. That is because it doesn't add any color and it creates a sort of frosted look if you have color behind it or if you have white, it doesn't change the color at all. It just looks like there's nothing there, but it allows really good placement. So the first thing I do is apply some tape adhesive around the edges of my opening. In this case, it's my frame. This frame is A2 in size, so it's going to cover the whole card front. Then once I have put down my adhesive, taken off the backing paper, I put my vellum over the top of that. If you want it to be really see-through, use a piece of acetate, or you can use a page protector if you don't have acetate. You can also use the um, transparency sheets or even old packaging. Once I have that down and I have applied that to my frame, I'm going to go ahead and apply some dimensional adhesive. This is foam adhesive. You need to use a little bit of dimension here so your little bits that you put in, in our case sprinkles, they have room to shake around. As you're putting this down, you wanna make sure that you butt those ends up right next to each other and you don't leave any openings so your pieces can't fall out. Then once we have that on, I like to take off my backing paper and then fill. It's easier for me this way. I find if I take the backing paper off after I fill, it always gives a little jump and then pieces like to stick to my adhesive. So if I take it off before, I avoid that problem and I only have a few pieces that stick as I put it in. As I'm putting this in, I am going to really load mine up. You can put as much or as little as you want, as much as your little card can handle. If you live in a dry climate and you're having trouble with any sort of static, which can sometimes happen in shaker cards, use a little bit of baby powder or cornstarch, or you can use an embossing bag and just run it around the inside. You wanna do that while the backing paper is still on so you don't mess with your adhesive. You want a really nice strong adhesive and a really nice strong grip whenever you go to close this up, or your recipient might lose all the bits on themselves and that's not good. So I put in some pink, some navy, and some white sprinkles. I'm going to shake it just so they are leveled out here. And then for my backing, I am going to use a piece of vellum. Like I said before, I love using vellum to close up my shaker cards. It takes out the guesswork of trying to place your card base on top of your shaker or any sort of backing. You don't have any color with it this way and anything that is behind it will still show through. It will just give a nice frosted effect. If you don't want that frosted effect, you can use a piece of acetate or maybe a page protector that you've cut down to size, something like that, so it doesn't mess with the color. 
Now you can see I've got some nice good shaking going on and this one is really filled up to the brim. I can do that because I made these. So I have a lot of sprinkles to go around here. I'm not so worried about wasting them and having to buy more. Now it's time to go ahead and attach our front onto our base. Whenever you apply adhesive to attach this, you wanna make sure that you don't go into the opening at all. Put it right where you put your foam adhesive and you'll be safe. Then I just line this up onto an A2 card base, stick it down, and this card is good to go. It's got some nice shake to it. It has a really great sound to it too. These are just really, really fun cards and really simple to make too. And of course, I used my SVG cut files to do this, so I have a happy birthday, a thanks, and a hello in that file, but there are a lot of different card craft companies that make cover plate dies that do the same thing if you don't have an electronic cutting machine. Now, along the same lines, I am going to do another shaker card, but this one's a little bit different. We're going to do a smaller version of a shaker card, and we're not going to use the whole front. We're just going to pick our section. So I have this ice cream cone front. Again, this I cut with my Cricut. It is an SVG file, but a lot of different craft companies have dies like this. They have cupcakes, they have ice cream cones, popsicles, things like that. You could even do this with a flower or a rainbow. So the first thing I did was cut my acetate down to size. Now I have an acetate that I love to use. I will leave it linked down in the description box below. It's a wonderful company um, and it's a really hefty acetate. It's always really clear. There's tissue paper sheets in between it so I know it's always gonna be crystal clear. And then I went ahead and lined up my card front on my card base because I want to do a little bit of ink blending. I don't want this whole thing to be a shaker card and I want to map out where I need each section. So I used my pencil to do that and then I used a kneaded eraser to lighten up those pencil marks. If you keep your pencil marks very heavy and then you ink blend over it or you watercolor over it or you color pencil over it, those lines are impossible to get rid of. So invest in a kneaded eraser and use that to lighten your pencil lines. They're only a few dollars and such a great investment. So you really can't see unless you look very, very hard for those pencil lines. And now that they're so light, I can easily cover them with my ink. I use some light hold painter's tape. This is actually a washi painter's tape from Scotch. Um, it comes in a nice big roll. You get it and you can get it on Amazon or you can get it in your local hardware store in the paint section. And it's a delicate surface painter's tape. Then I'm taking a stencil with a grid and I am using a darker ink. So in this case, I used vintage photo, I believe. And then over the top of that, I'm going to remove my stencil and used brushed corduroy and ink blend that over the top. It smooths out those darker layers and it just gives a nice waffle cone kind of feel to the ice cream cone itself. It's a really neat look, really easily really easily done just by layering up your colors and using a very simple stencil. Then I peel off my painter's tape and it's time to start making the actual shaker portion. So like I said, we're just doing the top. So I am going to apply adhesive only around the top portion of that ice cream cone. I'm using a very thin but strong tape adhesive here. I will leave the adhesive I use linked down below and it comes in all different sizes. If you have one that's too big, you can trim it down with your scissors. You don't need to buy a lot of different sizes. I just have these for convenience. Then I'll peel off my backing paper and put on my acetate. Now for the foam tape, I want to get as close to the edges as possible so I don't have shaker bits going all the way over to the edge when I don't need to. I want these all to be nice and centered in my ice cream cone top. So I'm making sure that my foam is right up next to those edges. I'm also making sure that I am bumping up those edges of the foam tape right next to each other so none of my polymer clay sprinkles can spill out. 
If you have a small space that you need to get your foam tape into, you can cut it down. You can cut it in half. You can make smaller pieces like I did here. Then I just filled up my shaker with my little rainbow sprinkles that I made. These are so fun. Then over the back of that, I'm putting down a piece of vellum and then I cut it down to size. Doing it this way allows me wiggle room and I don't need to be precise when putting this down. I already need to be precise on the one edge. So just worrying about that one edge and nothing else really helps out a lot. Now for this adhesive on the back, where the foam tape isn't, I'm going to put more foam tape. But then where the foam tape is, I'm going to layer on the back of that some tape adhesive. That's going to give me nice dimension that is even all the way across the back of this card. So as you're putting down adhesive, just be aware of where you already have foam adhesive. You don't wanna add more and then have two layers where in other parts you only have one. Then I'll flip this over, line it up on my card base with my ice cream cone that I've stenciled, and this card is almost complete. The only thing I did was add this little happy birthday. Again, I cut this out with my Cricut. You can use a little happy birthday stamp on a banner and throw that on the top. You could even stamp happy birthday in the bottom right-hand corner or left-hand corner, and you're good to go. So there are my two shaker cards, super simple and easy. Now the next thing I like to do with my polymer clay sprinkles is I like to add them to mediums. So I have my shaker card that I made and as I was making that, I had these pieces that were cut out from those little areas where I did my ink blending and my shaker. So I'm gonna use those to make my next card instead of letting them just sit and go to waste. Now, on that ice cream cone top, I am going to add some light and fluffy modeling paste. This is from the Crafters Workshop. It comes in a lot of different forms, different names, I guess you could say, from different companies. Um, I will leave some link down below. You might even have some on hand. You just want that light, fluffy texture and to look like ice cream. You can color this if you want by adding inks but I'm keeping mine nice and white because once I get this on my paper and I'm just using a palette knife to do that, I'm going to go ahead and add my rainbow sprinkles. Then I'll use my finger to give them a press. So you wanna make sure that you have a thicker layer. So once you press those sprinkles in, that medium will hold on to those sprinkles. Now, once I press those in and this dries, that medium will hold on, like I said, and these aren't gonna go anywhere, but this is just such a cute way to use these. Then I'm gonna do that same technique that I did on my ice cream cone before. I'm just gonna use a darker ink through a stencil, which is the vintage photo, and then I'll remove the stencil and use a lighter ink, which is the brush corduroy, and go right over that stenciling. Kind of blends everything together. You don't want it perfect because no ice cream cone is perfect. Now also to finish this card, and while that top was drying, I'm just gonna go ahead and add a little bit of a nice bright square that's gonna help, or rectangle, excuse me, I need to learn my shapes, and I'll add that behind to help that ice cream cone pop out. I use some peacock feathers and that is a distress ink as well. Then I'll pop up that ice cream cone once it's nice and dry. And you can see I can touch those sprinkles. They are not moving, they are not budging. They are on there for good. Now, again, I like to add mine to mediums that I use on cards. However, if you make resin pieces, these are really great to add to them as well, or different mediums for journaling too. So once I had that on, I just added my happy birthday sentiment, the same one here, I just chopped it in half, added that to the bottom right hand corner, and there is my third card. I really love the way this turned out, especially because it was made using leftover pieces, and I got two different cards that are completely different, but still very similar. And I got to use just one piece of cardstock that I ran through my Cricut. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and look at how I like to use the polymer clay sprinkles that I made in the last video. If you haven't already, you can subscribe to my channel now. Thank you guys so much for watching today and happy crafting.